when, when you're discussing uh, Marie Coleman, yeah. and Stephen Stockwell, uh, yeah. and not to mention the, the, the dozens and dozens of local characters who have been killed. Many, many, yes. I lost a camera crew in Baghdad. Yeah, no, I, I just say that because we forget that you're on your, I thank you for bringing it up. A lot more people who've been killed in Syria and Iraq are, are Iraqis and Syrians. Uh, the Western journalists tend to get the press, but you're absolutely right. The, 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 the majority of numbers are, are local Arabs, yes. But you mentioned two, two different drivers. Two, you're looking for a reason for, for, for this job, right? Yeah. And, and one, you're, you say that Marie, maybe Marie Coleman was able to, to move policy in some way. By well, she's bearing witness, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not talking about advocacy journalism. I, I, I don't think that's our role. I, I, I'm not a fan of going that far. I think the best you can hope for in my world is, is to bear witness, which is what Marie was doing. Um, it's up to the policymakers to read the damn newspaper. <laughs> How much more of this can we take? Um, you know, Clinton famously made the decision to bomb the Serbs in Kosovo after reading a front page story uh, on the New York Times, which was fed to them by Human Rights Watch. And that's one of the foundational stories of Human Rights Watch. They had a young researcher um, who happened to come across this massacre in a, in a village, um, took some pictures, called the New York Times, said, you guys need to come and see this. And um, New York Times then published the story. And Clinton has admitted that that newspaper story made him realize he needed to step in. Um, but I don't think it's, it's the, the job of, of a Marie Calvin and Wells to to stand in front of Congress and say, you know, you know I've seen these horrible killings, you need to do something. I, I think that's, that's taking it too far. Just, yeah. At, 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 a, at a core basis, in terms of what's driving uh, a reporter in, in conflict, mm. because, because a lot of this reporting has a zero effect or has, has the opposite effect of what, yes. what, what you think it might be. Yeah. So how, how, do you, how do you... No, that's the dilemma, and that's what I was referring to. The, 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 when are you bearing witness and when are you a voyeur? Because there clearly is war porn, and you can see a lot of it on, on, on YouTube. A lot of it is not even from media organizations. You know, these days, a lot of it is just self-generated you know, iCitizens, people with their iPhones, and they take pictures. And um, you know, there's a company here in Dublin, Storyful, that, that sort of tries to check how much of this is genuine and whether it can be used for media use and so on and so, so forth. But it, it, it is something that is always, has always, was always with me. And, and the, the story of this guy in, in Jakarta really brought it to my mind. At what point are you just watching this because it's horrific and compelling? And, and what value can you add by publishing or photographing or filming this? Um, and I think, again, it, it comes down to, to, to context and how you use it. Um, there are a number of things that, that you know, I decided not to show for various reasons. I didn't think they were tasteful, um, not helpful to, to explain stories and various conflicts. Um, but it's underneath it all, I think, certainly for myself and the other correspondents that I know who covered conflicts, the end goal is clearly to, to sort of move policy. Um, because if not, then why are you doing it? Um, it is frustrating. All that journalism in Sarajevo did nothing until finally Clinton took a political decision to bomb the Serbs again. Um, nothing has really been done in the Congo. And there's been coverage of the Congo, not as much, but um, didn't stop the war in the Congo. Um, you know, you can go through the, the, the various conflicts that, that haven't been stopped. And Syria, right now, is, is the most begging, is the most uh, you know, throbbing issue out, out there. This is getting out of hand. And, and, you know, now Europe is getting worried because all these refugees are coming. Well, this is probably something we should have thought of several years ago. Um, it is nonetheless not going to be solved without an informed debate. And that's as far as I'm concerned, that's where the foreign correspondent or the war correspondent's job ends. Here are the facts, Mr. President, Mr. Prime Minister, Madam Prime Minister, it's over to you now. And at some point, you just have to let it go. It's like having a kid and you, you send them to college, you've got to, it's, it's, it, it's up to you now, you know? 
I can't do any more. It's not a very, thank you, thank you, it's not always. Um, that's the best I can do. I, I, there are many, I can tell you there are many war correspondents who, who've, who, who've, whose lives have been embittered by the experiences they've had in not being able and, and not seeing policy changes to correct what they've seen. And, and I have plenty of friends who, you know, who struggle with that even today um, in wars all across the world. 